Praise in the midst of this. Hallelujah. How many that we still need an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival? Amen. Let's give the Lord one more praise. Come on, let's give God one more praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn around this morning. We welcome you to Solid Rock. We're glad that you're with us this morning. Amen. Turn around and shake somebody's hand. Just play a course of that again. Amen. Shake somebody's hand. Welcome to church. Amen. Let the blessing of the Lord this morning bless you. We need Holy Ghost revival touching me, touching you. Touching you. We need a generation restoration. Holy Ghost revival. Holy Ghost revival touching me, touching you. We need a celebration, restoration. Holy Ghost revival, send it, Lord. Somebody give 
give him a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a praise. Come on now. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in church this morning? Hallelujah. He's a mighty good God this morning. Amen. Well, I tell you, that song, that's what we have need of this morning right there. Amen. Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Right now, would you slip your hands out towards heaven and ask God's blessings upon this service this morning. Ask God to speak to every heart and every life and Ask him to minister to us in a way that only he knows how to do this morning by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, just talk to him a bit this morning. Pray for those that are sick. Remember Brother Calvin Gregory. Amen. Still he's struggling to breathe. Amen. Ask God to touch him this morning. Amen. All those that are battling sicknesses in here, ask God to touch him this morning. Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, God, we come before the throne in the mighty name of Jesus. Worship. God, All I want to do Follow is lay here right at your feet. As I lift my hands toward heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord, once again. All I do Hallelujah, worship. Bye. 
your hands towards heaven and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this victory this morning. Thank you for the anointing this morning, Lord. Thank you for the victory, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. We worship. Hallelujah. 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 We can all the fire within me. Yes, Lord. Once again, I want to do is love you. Hallelujah. I want to do is worship. I want to do is lay here right at your feet. Oh, what an awesome God. Hallelujah. Come on, just raise your hands and love him a moment. Feel the presence of God. Want to touch some hearts and lives in here this morning. Want to minister to some needs here this morning. Hallelujah. Just want to touch us in the innermost part of our being this morning. By the grace of God. Father, we thank you for it. Father, we honor you while your presence is moving this morning. Just love him. Thank you, Jesus. All I want to do. y'all this morning just minister to you in the name of Jesus Father by the power
in the leads that's in this place. Spirit of God's in here this morning. Anointing of the Holy Ghost is here to touch our hearts. Give us strength and give us courage. And he's such an awesome God this morning. Hallelujah. If he's touched you, ministered to you in any kind of a way, just thank you for a moment. Just take, We all time ask you, but let's just Praise Him for just a moment this morning. All of His goodness and all of His mercies. Father, we just want to thank you again. Thank you for these people, Lord. Thank you for ministering to every need. While we honor you for it, we praise you for it. While we worship you for it today. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for it this morning. Hallelujah. Let's just give the Lord another shout of praise this morning. Come on, let's make it sound like church. Come on, let's make it sound like church. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. I know he's a good God this morning. Amen. Well, it's good to have Brother John and Sister Shirley with us. Her for her first time this morning. Amen. Good to have them this morning. Amen. Got several out sick this morning, but God's just a good God. Amen. He's a mighty good God this morning, and I believe you do great and mighty things. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. We're honored to have you with us in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're getting ready to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Amen. As you prepare to give this morning, let the Lord richly bless you. Amen. Let him, amen. As he's blessed you, you bless him back this morning. Amen. And, um, uh, Yes, but, okay, well, I'm sorry, I, amen, it's good to have you all this morning. Prayed for you and forgot to have you, <laughs> but it's good, to be, it's good to have you this morning. God bless you. Amen. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. Um, today, um, Sister Jean has really been working very hard. She's worked endless hours on the Christmas play for tonight just to get it organized and to keep all the, keep, get everything for the kids, everything. I ask you to keep her in prayer today. She's been sick in her body too. So I ask you to just, amen, just ask God to continue to touch her. Pray for strength and for the needs to be met this morning. Amen. Brother Jason's getting ready to come and receive her tithes and her offerings this morning. Would you give him and the Lord a good hand? Amen. It's just an honor to be able to be in a, House of worship this morning, amen. How many knows that that's, that's a freedom and a liberty we have, amen. And it, it, it's just such a blessing uh, that we have the church that we have, amen. The anointing, the preaching, the word, amen. Um, 
but this morning we're going to receive the tithes and offerings, and uh, just want to encourage you in giving. And I know how the Bible said, "He that not he spared not his only son, how shall he also not freely give us all things?" Amen. How many knows God is a giver? Amen. We can never outgive the Lord. We can never outgive the uh, the Lord. That's that's a that's a proven fact. Amen. Uh, the Bible said in Psalms, I believe it is, cast thy bread upon the water, and after many days, watch it return unto thee. Amen. We invest in so many things in life. Amen. So many things is wasted. So many things. Amen. But when we lay in store in heaven, the Bible said, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I want to encourage you in tithing. The Bible in Malachi said, Bring all your tithes into the storehouse that they may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith. And this is one of the biggest things. Satan uh, fight people over his tithing. Uh, and and it, it's just such a big part of being blessed. I mean, I, I know more the Christian walk is so much more than finances. But, man, it sure is a benefit. It's, it's just like being saved and having this benefit of being saved. You know, we trust God in our finances. So, amen, every time I give, God just, he, he just rains it back on me. Amen. But he said, uh, he said, if it will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that you shall not have room enough to receive it. And I love what he says here. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before its time, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. If the offering takers have come this morning, I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you for being faithful. Amen. Thank you for supporting the ministry. Amen. Thank you for being faithful in your tithings. Reach your hands this way. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you and we ask you to multiply and bless just as you did the fish and the loaves, Father. We give unto you this morning, trusting and knowing, Father, that we're laying in store where this world cannot touch what we're given this morning, Lord. We thank you for the heart you've given us to give. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm Sam, I'm thankful to be here this morning, thankful for Jesus saving my soul. And my sister Helen, she said, when I die, I want you to sing when I lay my Isaac down. And I got to thinking about that, and I thought, oh, my Lord, she won't even hear it. She won't even know it. So when she has an opportunity to come to church, I said, Helen, if I can think of it, I will sing it for you because I want to sing it while you're alive, not when you're dead.
just to find that it wasn't him. God wanted me. And when I lay my Isaac down, it's with a broken heart. Oh, but my father's proud. And on this altar here he lay, just to find that it wasn't him. God wanted me. Now most of us that I dare to say that we have an eye sick in God's way. But on the altar, God's going to prove that it's not your Isaac that He wants. He wants you. And when I lay my Isaac down, it's with a broken heart. Oh, but my father's proud. And on this altar, here he lay, just to find that it wasn't him. God wanted me. With a broken heart Oh, but my father's proud And on this altar here he Oh, yes Just to find that it wasn't him God wanted me Abraham He prayed for the day that God would give him a son. Blessed Isaac was his name. He was the greatest gift he'd ever known. But then came that day. Who would have dreamed? God would say, Abraham. Give him to me. And on this mountain you will prove that it's you and I seek. For it's me and it's you. And when I lay my eyes it's with a broken heart. Oh, but your father's proud. Yes, he is. God wanted me. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet and give God a praise. Come on. When I lay my eyes in down. See, every one of us can relate to that song this moment because we've all had Isaacs in our way. With a broken heart, oh, but my father's proud. And on this altar, here he lay, just to find that it wasn't Isaac. God wanted me. <laughs> Come on, let's sing it one more time. Sing it. And when I made my Isaac dead. But my father's proud And on this altar Here he lay Just to find that it wasn't him God wanted me We'll give the Lord one more praise this morning Amen Hallelujah Give him praise Amen Hallelujah You may be seated this morning 
God's a mighty good God. How many knows he's a mighty good God this morning? Amen. He's an awesome God this morning. Amen. Mr. Reader. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. How many knows that God's a wonderful Savior this morning? Sister Jean, they don't know what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> they don't have a clue what I'm doing, but I know we've already taken her tithe and her Sunday school offering this morning, but I feel this morning we should bless her pastor and pastor's wife with her Christmas offering. They give all the time unto us, and I just feel like they need to come down front. We come down and shake their hand and give them an offering. If you don't have anything to give, he'll, he'll come and shake their hand this morning, but I feel like we need to bless y'all this morning. Jehovah Jireh, He is my 
of the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God's a good God. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that so much this morning. We thank you for it. Amen. All right. You may go to your Sunday school this morning very quietly and reverently. Let's give the Lord one more shout of praise this morning, would you? Come on. Let's give God a shout of praise. Amen. You know, 
I want to say this this morning and as we we're preparing. And don't you wish sometimes that God would move the way you wanted him to move? But if he moved the way you wanted him to, he would never be able to complete what he wanted to because I'm limited in my thinking. I can't see tomorrow. God can. And because of that, it makes all the difference. Amen. And sometimes, you know, I, I want God to do it, you know, the way I see it, the way I understand it. But if 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 God went that way, and sometimes he's moved for me and give me the desires of my heart. So, But at the same time, amen, we have to align with the will of God and not my will, your will. Somebody say amen. God does have a will. And uh, I know, you know, tomorrow's Christmas Eve and uh this is the eve of Christmas Eve, and uh, a lot of people are, are, are celebrating. They're doing a lot of things. But Sister Jean taught a lesson last Sunday morning with the children. I shared on the radio this morning, and uh, she uh, shared with the children, and she took one of the little nativity sets that was out there, and, and she put it on the – she got all the kids around the floor like we used to do at Christian school. And uh, she put it down there, and then, <coughs> then she covered it up with presents and the children they begin to realize and and she asked she said well you know she could see on their face and someone was saying and she said well what's wrong and the children said you have covered up Jesus with things and that's easy for us all to do not just one day anything in our lives, and I want to learn from it. If y'all excuse me just a minute, I've got to tie a few. I don't have a pair of shoes on right now. I need to get some gloves on. But all these children, they got their socks on. Thank you, God, little brother. He's a mighty good God this morning. And uh, I want to say it's an honor to, to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And, you know, uh, I'm sure all across America this morning and most of the churches, they are, we're telling the Christmas story. We're telling, and it is the greatest story ever told. I want to say it's good to have Brother Chris and Christy back with us this morning. He had surgery Thursday morning, and he's doing better by the grace of God. And amen. It's good to have him back in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Y'all have to bear with me. Amen. I've not been thinking well. Hallelujah. But he's a mighty good God. Amen. Hallelujah. My head feels about as big as this room does. But God's a good God. He's a merciful God this morning, and I thank God for that. And uh, uh, in, in the lesson that we're going to talk about this morning, and, and we're going to go, I, I would like to go to the book of Luke, chapter number 2 again, just to start with. And, and I know you've read this. You've heard it. You'll hear it probably again tonight. And... Uh, but, you know, the Word of God is always right and it's always helpful. The Word of God always has guidance in it. And sometimes we take our eyes off of it. We, you know, uh, as Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, amen, and he began to sink into the, into the sea. And sometimes, you know, uh, if uh, we're not careful, we can get our eyes off of him. But the Bible says this, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree of Caesar Augustus, that all the world should be taxed. How many knows this was still in the plan of God? Amen. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all that went out to be, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and of the lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Now, we've heard this story, but, amen, there's just a couple things that, amen, that they'll stand out here just in a moment. It was so that while they were there, that the days were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes or strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Hold it right there for just a moment. Now, when I looked at that and, and I see this, and how, how many ever knows better to do something and you've done it? How many ever pulled out in front of somebody and know that you might get hit? 
you know, or touch something that's that hot and you touched it. I've done that many times. <laughs> we ain't going to go there. <laughs> Watch it. Some of y'all got bad memories. Hallelujah. Amen. But God, amen. You know, one day, uh, I'll tell this for y'all that don't know. Amen. I was just a kid, you know, and just a boy, you know, just curious about things. And, you know, and, and, and uh, I know little girls probably don't do this, but boys sometimes do stupid things. And we had a little uh, coal oil or a little oil stove in the bedroom that we heated with, and I laid my hand on it. They turned it off, and it wasn't hot. I laid my hand on it. It wasn't hot. And I thought, well, you know, just I'm almost going to touch my tongue to that and see if it's hot. Now, what wasn't hot to the hand can melt the tongue. I'm living proof of that. Now, some of y'all, when y'all are having a bad day, if you'll think about that, it might say pick you up maybe. I don't know, but God's a good God. Somebody shout amen. And I wore the print, that little diamond print of that stove on my tongue for probably a week. Amen. Now, let me tell you how many stoves I've stuck my tongue to after that. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. That was enough. Amen. I think it's because David tried to execute me that time. I, I've had a lot of bad things happen. I believe it's all because of him. Somebody shout amen. But God is good. Amen. And uh, as we get into this this morning and you look at this, amen, the Bible says that, you, amen, she brought forth her firstborn, she laid him in a manger, or she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, strips of cloth, amen, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, if you've got a room in your house or you know there's a room somewhere, a cellar, a basement, amen, and there is no light, there is no windows in it, and no matter how many treasures is in that room, until light comes into that room, nothing's revealed. Nothing's no good. Amen. And, you know, I, I, I've often thought this. How many of us, you know, we got a room full of stuff, but there's no light in it. Amen. So, I, you know, I want light in my room this morning. Amen. The light of the world. Amen. Next verse, please. Amen. Hallelujah. And thou went out in the same, and thou were in the same country, shepherds abiding in field, in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, which these were probably the shepherds and these lambs were probably Passover lambs, amen, that was going to be used, amen, for the Passover. Amen. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid. Amen. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. How many knows that, amen, that we should have the joy this morning? Which shall be to all people, not part of the people, some people, amen, but to all people, amen. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Somebody shout, amen. And if you're marking your Bibles, you ought to mark the Savior there. Because, amen, it wasn't just a baby born. It wasn't just a king born there. Our Savior was born there. Amen. Somebody shout, Savior. Because without a Savior, you're not saved. Amen. Buddha's not our Savior. Muhammad's not our Savior. Allah's not our Savior. Only Jesus Christ is our Savior this morning. And you better be glad that you've got a Savior. Somebody will shout amen right there. See, we have so much in this land. Hold it right there, brother. Thank you. We have so much in this land, and, amen, and, and I take so much for granted. Amen. Sometimes, you know, when I'm watching TV and, and the commercial comes on with those, some of those children in the third world countries, and, amen, and, and, and you see the, 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 the child in the state that it's in, you know, you see its ribs and its, its body is bloated and it's, it's deformed in some kind of a way, amen, because of just not a, li a, a lack of food. It's, it's uh, amen, and on starvation, you know, malnutrition, uh, amen. And, and, and when you look at this, amen, it's still hard to find them, you know, or, or that, you know, and, and I hear people say, well, that's just a a gag. That's just one baby. Amen. No, that, that's just one of millions. But, you know, how many children do you see today? I mean, just around, you know, we don't see children like that. That's, a, that's an average thing for them there. See, we are so blessed that if we're not real careful, we just pass up everything. And don't take any time to stop for it. I'm preaching from here to there. Amen. It's so easy to grumble with a mouthful of food. 
It's so, gr- it's so easy to grumble sitting at a buffet table. And our waitress is not as fast as she should be. <laughs> you know, because we have come to this conclusion in this hour that it's more about us than it is anything else. A- and the more I realize it's less about me. And if, and if, and if I could see me, and, and, and I, I try this every now and then, and I don't like it, but I, 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 I would often think, or I've, I've thought, said, the word, what would I be if the Savior hadn't came? What kind of person would I be without a Savior? See, without the Savior, this church wouldn't be here today. Without the Savior, you wouldn't be here today. Now, I, I know we judge people and we have a harshness sometimes and things. And, you know, and I, I hear people say, I'm saying, well, they get what they deserve. Amen. You know, I, I try to watch those kinds of words. Amen. But anyhow, you know, I, I talked to a guy one time and he, he, he said, you know, uh, he, he made some financial choices and, and, and they wasn't good and, and it, it cost him some, amen, it cost him some things. Amen. But I, I realized that could have been me. Huh? That could have been me. Could have been me. Amen. And uh, see, under uh, under you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. And I, 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 this is really not my text or my message, but amen. When I look at this, amen, amen. There's a Savior which is Christ the Lord. And I want you to understand something this morning. If there had been a Savior, amen, nothing else really matters. How many really believes that this morning? So if we don't get a hold of this part, and you know, and I want to enjoy my salvation, amen, I want to enjoy what God has done for me. I want to be able to, amen, say thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness and your tender mercies, amen. Amen. Daniel, just stop right there for me. I want you to come right back to it. But I want you to go to Lamentations chapter number 3, if I believe it is, amen. And here is something that you and I do not understand sometimes. You know, uh, well, you know, I, I'm a good guy. Thank you, Sister Rhonda. I may say that again, see if you would agree the second time. But anyhow, amen, after what you said this morning, amen, you got to say something, don't you? But anyhow, God is good. Lamentations chapter number 3. And this is something I want you to understand this morning, amen, by the gracious and the mercies of God. Give the Lord a shout of praise as he's getting there to it this morning. I can quote it. <coughs> I can quote it to you, but I I want you to see it if you can this morning to understand the goodness and the mercies of an almighty God this morning. Amen. Because he's an awesome God. Somebody shout, I've got a Savior this morning. Come on, say it again. I have a Savior this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell tell your neighbor again, verse 22. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so awesome this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. If it, it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. Amen. Not be, now listen, amen. Now some people don't put themselves in that category. But if it hadn't been for our Savior this morning, we would have all been destroyed. How many understands that this morning? I, I've got to get you to understand something this morning. I want to, amen, to stop and appreciate what God did for me. Christmas is more than just a bunch of packages. It's more than just getting together, having a good time. It's enjoying what God has done for you and I. Somebody shout amen this morning. Without a Savior this morning, we'd be lost. Without a Savior, we'd be empty this morning. Now, I know we all have a Savior this morning, and thank God for it. But how many times do we stop and just say, thank you, Lord? Now, we're, we, you know, we go on the highway, we pray for safety. We pray for this. We pray for that. But do we stop and just say, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes when I walk out of the hospital, and I, I, I never, I, I, I don't thank the Lord, amen, that them people's in there. But I say, God, I thank you that I'm as good as I am today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because, God, I could be in there. Now, most of us, we want to get in the hospital, say, hi, how are you? Bless you. I come to see you. Now, I got to get out of here and get. <laughs> That's us. Why did I get a cold wave on that? It's still the truth. Because we've got a life to go on with. But if it hadn't been for the Lord, mercies, what? We, we, that is by the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed because his compassion. 
Now, have we got something to praise God for this morning? Have we got something to praise God for this morning? Have we got something to praise Him for this morning? Have we got something to honor Him for this morning? Huh? Have we got something to shout about this morning? Have we got something to go tell the world about this morning? Amen. Next verse. Amen. So this is what I want to get to you. And these are the shepherds, amen, to a point. And they are new. Now, the compassion and the mercies of God, they are new every morning. Do you know every morning you get up, God's mercies are new to you? Now, I don't know about y'all, but that shouting ground, amen, when the devil comes, uh, you can say, Mr. Devil, I got something to shout about. The mercy of God is new today. Amen. Blake, the mercies of God's new on you. Brother Seth, the blessings of God, the mercy of God is new every morning. Amen. Y'all know the story I told you, or uh, the commercial about Liberty Mutual Insurance. You know, uh, when the, the guy was talking to, to Martha, ever what his wife name is, and he said, you, you understand that? Amen. Liberty forgives. Don't hold grudges. Thank you. Huh? Do you realize God's mercies are renewed every morning? Now, is that something to get them to shout about? Is that something to raise your hands and say, thank you, Lord? Amen. We've got a Savior today. Amen. And great is thy faithfulness. How many knows that God is faithful in what he does to us this morning? Would well, somebody give God a shout of praise? Amen. Come on, give God a shout. <laughs> Amen. Saying this book, I was going to try to write it down, didn't have time to write it down, amen. But I, I want to bring it out to you just in a minute, amen. And, 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 and here's the thing, amen. I, I see some people try to, to, to serve God by their works. Now, I believe works of faith without works is dead, but you can't get good enough to get saved, you can never be good enough to go to heaven. I know, I know, I know people that tries that. I talked to a lady one time, and she said, the things I don't say and the places I don't go, and I understood her to a point, and she said, and the things I do do, but she said, uh, I really don't know if I have to have, because I'm better than most people. I don't care if she smells like a rose. She's still lost. Without a Savior, you're lost this morning. Is, is, is this all right? Amen. Without a Savior, you're lost this morning. Without a Savior, I'm lost this morning. Amen. So what God is trying to tell you and I this morning, God is good. Now, oh, amen. Amen. Now go back to Luke chapter number 2 there. Amen. Now when I get in here, amen, why, amen, and you may have heard this somewhere else, I don't know. Amen. Maybe someone else has said something about it. Amen. Why did the Lord choose to be born in a stable? There was more than, probably more than likely it was a cave. With a hewed out in the rock for a manger or a trough. Why wasn't he born in a palace? Why was he not born somewhere with dignity? Now, you know, you, you, you see sometimes, amen, the woman goes into labor and she has to, amen, they're on their way to the hospital and, amen, and she has the child in the back seat of the car or in a cab or something, amen. Amen. And, and, you know, and, and I, I mean, I guess that's no place to be born. But to be cho choose to be born in a stable is another another story. Now, I don't believe that that stable was no nothing no different than any other stable would be. I believe it had animals in it, or had residue of animals being there. It had a smell of an animal stable. Amen. So, and God chose to be born in a place that none of you would have chose. Or, so, what God is saying to us this morning, and I want you to understand, if it only came to an elite group, only that group would have had access of him. But he chose to come to the lowest, and the shepherds were the lowest. Amen. And even in, 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 in that eastern country, shepherds were not to be trusted. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests had a lot of trouble with them because when they would move their sheep across ground, amen, sometimes them sheep would eat grass from another man's pasture, and they called that stealing.
and nobody wanted anything to do with shepherds. How many's ever had? Not, how many's ever had people not want to have anything to do with you because of who you are? <laughs> Come on, church. Now, Amen. God only comes. Just say it like this: God has only come to a few of us here, us good people. Now, the rest of y'all, I'm sorry about you, but God came to a few of us good people. Y'all shaking y'all's head in disagreement more than I've ever seen you. I mean, you take me and Brother Jeff. Brother Jeff, pretty good guy. Oh, you, brother, brother uh, Randall, he's a super good guy. I like Brother Randall there, you know. Brother John, good guy, you know. I mean, and God, God, God likes us. But the rest of y'all, I don't know. I ain't sure about you. See, now have you got something to praise God for this morning? Amen. I went to a church one night, and, and, and they really preached. And amen. And I sat there and I listened. I thought, well, I'm not hearing what I think I'm hearing. And he preached. Amen. That pastor preached that night that his church was a first class people, and everybody else was second class Christians. Now I'm sitting there thinking, wow. I'm feeling pretty good to be in second class. Somebody shout amen. But I'm not second class. God don't have, amen, a good bunch and a, a fair bunch and a, and a poor bunch. Can I get a witness in this house? I don't know about y'all, but when I begin to put this together and God begin to talk to me, he said, son, amen, my people really need to realize one thing. If a man's in Christ Jesus, he's no longer under that condemnation. He's no longer under the burden of sin any longer. And somebody ought to shout hallelujah in here because the devil's job is to beat you down and to keep you under suppression. Oh, glory to be to God. Amen. Go to Sam. Uh, amen. Now watch this. Amen. Amen. Go, uh, okay. Amen. The, amen. Under you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is, which is Christ the Lord. Next verse now. Thank you. Amen. And watch what, what's the, what the angel said unto, unto the shepherds here. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, which was nothing out of the ordinary there. But you're going to find him lying in a manger. Now that was a little bit more distinct. How would you like to have your son or daughter born in a stable? By your choosing. Instead of going to the hospital, you went out to the barn and had your child because you wanted it born there. Does God care for you this morning? Does God reach down to you? How many times have you been beat down this year that God don't want you beat down? How many times has the devil whipped you that you shouldn't have been whipped on? Amen. Now watch this. Daniel, why would God do Next verse. Let me read one more verse, then we're going to get into this. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. There was a heavenly army appraising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill toward man. God had come to man. I read this story, and it may have little different versions of it, but amen. I read this story, and it was about Billy Graham and his grandson, and they were walking out in the country one day and walking through the, uh, the grass, and amen. And his grandson stepped on an anthill, and he crushed that anthill, and he hurt some of the ants, probably killed some of them. And the little boy realized what he had done, and he wanted to try to go over and help the ants and try to put the dirt back around and fix it right back around again. Amen. And the little boy was on his hands and knees, and amen, he was trying to help the ants out and trying to get them back up. And amen. And his grandpa Billy looked at him and said, Son, you can't help those ants unless you become an ant to help them. You're too big. You're too to the point awkward for the child, there's nothing you can do to help them ants. See, God's a holy God. He's a just God. He demands justice. You know that? He does. And God is righteous that he could not look upon sin, amen, without judging sin. If he looked on you, he had to pay, you had to be, pay the price for the sin. But Jesus said, hey, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap myself in flesh. I'm going to wrap myself in flesh, and I'm going to come down to man, and I'm going to become one of them, and I'm going to pay the price for them that they can come up to me. Can I get a witness in here? Tell your neighbor, praise God. Listen this morning. When you raise that hand unto a holy God, there's a price being paid for that this morning. And not your price. It was his price. 
Amen. When you clap your hands unto a holy God and you praise Him, something's been given for that. Amen. As that Passover lamb was in the Old Testament, from year to year, Jesus paid your sin debt that you can raise them hands, you can grab that flag and run around here and shout, look what the Lord has done. Somebody ought to want to praise God in here this morning. Amen. Church ought to be exciting uh, as presence is under a tree. Look what the Lord has done. Can I get a witness one more time? Give God a praise. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Now, when we look into these scriptures and we begin to think about this and, and the story that, 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 that I've revealed to you this morning, but if you'll go to Psalms chapter number 8, Psalms chapter number 8 this morning, amen, and I want to try to understand something. If I can get you to see this this morning, maybe, amen, that, we, that we'll have a, a greater freedom and a greater a, a, a praise in our spirits and, and the joy of the Lord that belongs to us this morning, amen? Amen. Ch chapter number 8, verse number 3. I can read number one, it don't really matter. But verse number three says this. When I consider the heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Now wait, hold it there, Daniel. I want you to look at that. Amen. This was the psalmist saying, when I consider the heavens, the vastness of them, when I consider the works of your fingers, I see the moon there. And the stars which you have ordained to do what they do, shine and, and the wonders. You ever go out and look it up at night and wonder, my Lord. I always want to go to Montana. They call that the big sky country. They say it's totally different than Montana. Never been. Some of y'all been there. They say it's the most awesomest thing. It's different. It's called the big sky. Everything looks different in Montana. <laughs> Maybe we all need to go to Montana. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. Next verse, please. When I consider all the works of your hands, the moon, the stars, the heavens, the ferments of the heaven, all these great things, what is a man? What is man, Chris? What is man that thou art mindful of him? The God that done all the splendors of all of this Amen? That God would think about a man. A man that don't want God. A man that his mind is constantly on something else besides God. Your mind ever was that way before you got saved? What, what are you, God, that you're mindful of a man after all the works that you have, that you can glory in the heavens, you can glory in what you have done. It would be like having a brand new vehicle, brand new, amen, that it's, it, it's invaluable. Maybe we're not talking about a Chevrolet or a Ford or a Cadillac or a Lincoln. We're talking about something, amen, that, that, that's high dollar. We're talking about maybe a three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar car. Amen. And when you would look at that, and you've got an old piece of a car over here. Now, which would you want to focus on? Maybe don't even run. I was watching uh, a Father Knows Best. It's a, it was a it was a little series back in the fifties. Amen. Amen. And they got a son on the name of Bud. And Bud, Amen, come home and ask his dad, could he buy a car? He said, son, you ain't got money for a car. He said, this car just costs $6, Dad. He stopped and said, well, what kind of car is this for $6? He said, it's in, in, in Joe's junkyard, and, and me and, and, and somebody's going to, we're going to take it, we're going to fix it, we're going to put it together, and we're going to get it going, and it's going to be our car. Somebody shout a $6 car. Now, when you look at that and you see this, amen, amen, and you can glory, amen, you can pull this out in the driveway and everybody can walk by and say, wow, that man's got to have money. Amen. And you can sit out there and look in that car, amen, and say, my, look what I got. Amen. Or would you want to go out there in the junkyard and get something that ain't worth anything? You know where God found you and I? It was in the junkyard. 
Can I get a witness in here? And why would God of all of his glory, the, the sun and the moon and the stars uh, and all the heavens declare the glory of God and God is mindful of a man. Uh, amen. You know God's got his eye. Amen. On a man this morning uh, that was drunk all night last night and God says I love him uh, and I'm going to woo him. Uh, there's that murderer over there. Uh, there's that thief down yonder. Uh, there's that prostitute. Uh, but I love him. Uh, somebody ought to shout uh, God my God uh, that God is mindful of me this morning. In all of the vileness that I had. Hello? <laughs> Could you imagine this morning seeing several cars parked in your yard? A knock on your door. There stands two men in black suits. Looks very sophisticated, very serious. You open the door and say, can I help you? They say, yes, President Donald J. Trump has come to pay you a visit. He wants to know if you'll let him come in. Most of you wouldn't believe it to start with. You couldn't wait to get on the phone and call Lucille. Come on, somebody. God, I wish somebody hear me this morning. Could you imagine, could you imagine people, if they knew that Donald Trump or him, amen, whether they liked him or hated him, they knew he was coming to Solid Rock Church this morning, I wonder how long a line we'd have. Come on, church. I wonder if some great dignitary was coming, amen, how we'd act and we'd want to make sure, amen, that our clothes were just right and we'd want to make sure we got here in time and make sure you saved my seat because he's coming to grace us with his presence. Y'all hear me this morning. He's coming, amen, to honor us, amen, just by coming our way. You know what? What is man that God, the great God, i got to say it again, over and over to you understand, the God that made the moon uh, and the God that hung it out there on nothing uh, and the God that slung the stars uh, all out through there and called every one of them by a name. Uh, God gave them names. Uh, do you understand me this morning? Uh, and God said, yes, uh, and all of that, uh, wait a minute, I know Mark steals and guess what God did one day over in a little community called uh, Mail Ridge how many of y'all know where Mail Ridge is at if three of y'all do I'll, I'll be surprised well hold your hand up there's one two how many of y'all was lost when you got there <laughs> one two three four the only reason Sister Rhonda does because she lives at the end of the earth. I mean, you have to go to Mel Ridge to get to her house. Somebody shout amen. Amen. There's five people who know where Mel Ridge is at. Amen. If I try to tell you how to get there, and I don't know how to get there blindfolded. But my goodness, to tell you how to get there, which is several ways to get there. But anyhow, and then when you get to Mel Ridge, you've got to turn right, go over a hill, down the bottom of the valley. And that's where Mark Stills was here. Born and raised. I know one thing. He'd have been lost if y'all was looking for him. Can I get a witness in here? But God knew where Mark Stilts was at and convicted his heart. Can I get a witness in here? When I was running wild, living like the devil, going to go to hell, God one night touched my spirit with that finger. I know what it is to be saved this morning from a devil's hell. But I don't know what I don't I only I don't only know what it is to be saved from a devil's hell. I know what it is to have a savior. Can I get a witness? And because I have a savior, I know what I am this morning. Did anybody hear what I'm telling you this morning? See, I don't go to church just to be churchy. You don't have to make me go to church and, hey amen, I've had my battles in 40 years. I've had my struggles in 40 years. But you know what? 
There's something inside me that's more real than what you see on the outside. Amen. And see, when they put this, when they put me in a coffin and they put me in the ground and they put dirt in my face, you know what? Amen. That's just a tabernacle. Amen. The real me still living. Amen. The real me is still there. And God realized that and I, 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 I can't answer it all. But I believe when God looked down and he seen man, he saw something. He saw the reflection of him. See, you, every one of y'all reflect God. Maybe not in outward appearance, but inside you got something that reflects a God. You're an eternal being. You have an eternal soul. Amen. You've got something that will live eternally. And God says, man, sin has stepped on man as that little boy stepped on that ain't hill. And he marred it. And nobody can straighten it up. Good works won't straighten it up. Can I get a witness? Nothing can straighten it up. It's going to take a Savior. Now, I know all of y'all are saved this morning, but I'm going to tell you something. I had a preacher friend of mine, and maybe y'all heard the story of him telling it. He, he was preaching a revival in a, amen, a, another place, and amen, he was preaching this revival, and amen, he, he knew this family, and he, the, the lady and the children would come to church, and amen, and this man was, I mean, he was, he, he was just, uh, he, was, he was a mean man. He was a ruthless man, and he hated God, and amen, and he, he did think he, he was a drunkard. He was a liar. He was an adulterer. Amen. I mean, you name it, and he would do it. And this preacher, amen, was in that service that night. And, amen, he knew the man. And the man came to church that night for some unknown reason. And that preacher said, boy, I'm going to do it tonight. He got up that night and he preached. He preached on that man. He told him how sorry he was, how ungodly he was, how unfit he was. Now, he didn't call him out by name, but he told, talked about the, Man, I mean, he nailed that guy. He chewed him up, spit him out, told him how useless he was, how unworthy he was, how he wouldn't even be fit to having breath in his lungs and all of that. Amen. That old man got up that night after church. Service done dismissed. Walked up front. Looked at that preacher and said, Preacher, you've done a good job. Shook his hand. Said, Preacher, you've done a good job telling me how bad, how filthy, how lost I was. But he said, you never once told me how to change. That evangelist said, what people were still left there, said, y'all sit down. He said, we're going to have church. They sat down. He began to preach again about the saving grace and the mercies of an almighty God that God will take the old and make new out of it. He'll take a black heart and put a new heart. Woo, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. He'll take the regrets and make joy sing. That man came to an altar that night and got gloriously saved. Amen. Somebody ought to shout yes in here. I'm talking about a Savior by the grace and the mercies of an almighty God. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I can remember people saying, I remember who you was. I remember what you done. But I want you to understand one thing. In the eyes of an almighty God, that God was mindful of you. And he said, I love you enough. I'll stop the stars. I'll stop looking at the moon and I'll come to a woman amen that her life is almost over and save her and deliver her and make her a child of the king somebody ought to shout yes in here this morning Hallelujah. Everybody ought to stand to your feet if you can uh, and give God a shout. You're not here because you're good. Uh, you're not here because you've done something mighty. You're here because of the mercies uh, and the praises uh, of an almighty God. Uh, somebody give him a shout this morning. 
How many feels that way this morning? You're here by the mercies of an almighty God. You know how many times I've come close to dying when I was lost without God? You know how many times I've come close to dying when I was lukewarm on God? Don't y'all ever sit there and look like you've never been lukewarm in your life? You just lied to yourself. Amen. God's good, thank you. I said amen. Give God one more shout of praise. <coughs> I want to enjoy the goodness of God. Jesus didn't come to the elite. He didn't come to the chosen few. He come to all mankind. See, that's all right there in the book of Luke. He came all to mankind. What is man that thought mindful of him? And the son of man. Do you know that God's got his eyes on Bella just as much as he does any other child? Things didn't happen for, uh, for, for uh, Bella like it maybe did for, what's the baby's name, uh, Christy? It may not work, man. But you know what, God's eye. Yes, sir. I told, she pushed her down here this morning, or sick, you know, her smiling, looking at you and smiling. And I said, my God, you got to laugh at her. Amen. Regardless if she's sick, need prayer, ever what she needs, you got to smile. And God causes that to cause me to smile. My brother Timmy, amen, he's supposed to be coming tonight by the grace of God. And, and uh, pray he'll get saved. I don't know whose baby doll this is, but boy, he's sure been down the road. God. Now, I'm going to tell you, that was me. That's me. Somebody really loves that baby to keep packing that and somebody shout amen. <laughs> amen. Somebody loves that baby. God, I don't know where that come from, but that will preach with it, won't it? <laughs> Who did? Robin did. <laughs> Robin, that's, uh, oh God, that's about, when she was a, when she was a little girl, three, four, five years old. We buy, and now Jeannie always had the curls and the bows and the flurlies and amen. And Sister Jean would fix Robin like that. Robin would reach up for her quick as she get around and pull that old bow out. She didn't want no bow. She changed, didn't she? And she'd take a baby doll and she'd take all of his clothes off. She'd get her an ink pen and she'd bunk on that baby. Don't sound like Robin, does it? Amen. Hallelujah. I'll tell you something else too. Amen. I was one day wasn't paying no attention to her and I wanted to sleep. I was tired. I was working night shift. I was just tired. I was wore out. She wanted to play and I wasn't. She wanted to play baby dolls. I didn't want to play. And she had one of them little juice bottles. That's glass. And I was laying there ignoring her, keeping my eyes shut. And son, she took that thing by the nipple. She flipped it around. That glass come down and hit me across that bone right there. Oh my God, I thought Gabriel had come to get me. It like to kill me. It popped a knot on my on my my eye got black. I'm telling you, she blacked my eye. And I'll tell you one thing I never did do from her from then on. I never shut my eyes when she was around me like that. Amen. Hallelujah. But God, that's me right there. Amen. That's me. That's the way I was. Sister Pound, the night you got saved, or that evening you got night you got saved on the corner of that couch. That was you. That was you. Now, Sister Rhonda was better. I mean, she didn't have to do anything like that. But that was you. That was you. How many of how many this was you? And who would be mindful of a piece of junk? Not when you've got a whole room full. Huh? Oh, God's good. Somebody shout God's good this morning. Is this good to y'all or not? See, when I can see something, I'm a person, if I can see it, I can, I can do it or get it fixed or I guess, uh, if I can visualize it. God said, if you're this shape, that ain't a thing you can do to help yourself. But I come here to do something for you. Alicia, God came, amen, to make you different. Brother Barry, to make you different. Where would you have been today? If God hadn't come by your way, 
you've had some good times, you've had some low times, probably had a few struggles living with, you know, in, in Milltown. Somebody shout amen. <laughs> I didn't say that now. Uh, you, you, you got a dandy there. Amen. Strike that from the records. <laughs> no. But you know what? That was me. That was you. That's every one of us. And not a one of us. Not a one of us can say I did something on my own. It was God that did it. Now you wonder why I want to praise him sometimes. And Amen. I just got to do something. Because I see what he done for me. When I was laying in my own pool of blood, he came by and rescued me. When everybody else looked and said, I ain't fooling them. I ain't got time. God said, I'm mindful of you, boy. Man, that don't make anybody want to shout. <laughs> if you got that much, you ought to want to shout with it. Can I get a witness in this house this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God's good. Almost done this morning. Almost done. But you know, God has a way of doing things. Amen. If you'll go to St. John, Daniel, chapter number 5. Almost done. I'm going to close here just in a moment. This was the man that laid at the pool for 30 and 8 years. Now, you say, well, what's this got to do with Christmas? Well, it was a man that had struggled for 30 and 8 years to get a healing. He struggled. He wanted it, but he couldn't get it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about when I said that? You struggle and you want it, but it seems like it's unattainable. And I'll guarantee you that people just pray, God, all I want to do is just be happy. This man... For 30 and 8 years, and I like to put it like this, and he even said this in scriptures, every time I try to get in, every time I'm on my way and I'm thinking, I'm almost there, I got, I'm almost there, God have mercy, and somehow somebody steps ahead of me, and I was toenail close, I'm getting my miracle. That's good preaching right there. I was that close. I struggled. I waited a whole year. I waited a whole season. And I've tried. And I worked. And I prepared. And I got everything in order. And I still missed it. That's disheartening. That's disappointing. It'll get you to the place of hopelessness. It will. How you know I've talked to too many people? I've been there myself. Somebody shout amen. Next verse, Daniel, please. Hallelujah. Jesus saw, Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been there a long time in that case. He said unto him, well, that made me know. Now watch this. Watch this. He almost made it time and time again. Almost time and time. Somebody shout Amen. And the impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the water trouble to put me in the pool. But while I was coming, another step was down before me. Look how many times he had tried in 38 years. How many seasons? Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. But you know what Jesus was? He was mindful. And the Bible says there was a whole multitude of people on them porches. Of sick and withered and lame and halt and impotent. But Jesus was mindful of one man that day. Not that he didn't care about them other people. But God was mindful. I don't know, I forgot the statistics now that of how many people die every second and every minute lost without God. It's staggering. And yet, can you imagine while people was dying and going to hell, God knocked on your heart. Now that's shouting ground. Hallelujah. Said that's shouting ground. Yeah. That's why I'm going to come to church and raise my hands. 
That's why I'm going to go to the house of God. Have I feel like a little shout, a little dance? I'm just going to do it. Well, what will somebody think? I really don't care what they think because I've got a Savior today that saved my soul, and I'm going to bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God, but the Spirit of God was moving in here this morning. Amen. And the Spirit of God was moving. And they were singing those songs. And, and, and oh, I want you to understand something. Now, I'm not always feeling God out my fingernails. I'm not always feeling like leaping from tall buildings. You know, people sometimes, they'll, they'll come to church, maybe they don't know me or something. They say, Brother, you just have God on you all the time. I said, no, I don't have God on me. All, I have God in me all the time. But there's times I don't feel what... But I know what I have, and I praise him with it. Amen. Chris, when they put you out for surgery, now I know that the anesthesiologist thought he woke you up. But you know who woke you up? You know who woke you up this morning? Because our people didn't wake up this morning. Can I get a witness in this house? I got a preacher friend, or I got a friend, not a preacher friend. I got a friend this morning. He's in a wheelchair today. They done to his spine the painkiller thing they put in your back. Very same thing. They touched the wrong nerve. He's paralyzed today. Can't walk. See, we're really blessed this morning. Thank God that you may have been battling a sickness. You may be battling something, but you still able to hear the word of God this morning. It's able to change you. Am I got a witness in this house this morning? Amen. And Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. And this man had got to the place, he wouldn't go walk no more. He said, I, don't, he said, I ain't got nobody to help me no more. Because he said, somebody's going to get it before I get it. How many of you feel like somebody's going to get it before you do? Huh? But you know one thing this morning? Hallelujah. God cares about you. Can I get a witness in this house? Raise your hand and say, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. God made that call that day. He approached that man. Somebody shout amen. Amen. And God touched him. God will never fail you. Sometimes it may seem the night season won't quit. But God won't fail you this morning. His love for you is greater than anything you can understand. This is the Christmas time. This is the time that we celebrate the birth of that babe land, that manger. But friend, I want you to understand something. There's more than a baby in that manger. Amen. Sister Jean may tell you this little story, but I'm going to tell you this morning. So don't, don't y'all tell her I told you this. And the preacher came to church one morning Christ, during Christmas time. It's after maybe the day after Christmas, I believe it was. The day after Christmas. And he happened to just glance over and see the nativity set sitting over there. Seen something missing. Baby Jesus was gone. He happened to hear another noise, and he turned, and he looked, and he seen a little boy going down the street with a wagon, and baby Jesus was in that wagon. He hollered at him and said, hey, son, son, wait. He went to him. He said, son, what are you doing? She may tell a little different because she got no paper. I'm just trying to tell her from memory. She said, son, he said, son, what are you doing? He said, I'm taking baby Jesus for a ride. He said, how come you're taking baby Jesus for a ride? He said, I came before Christmas and I prayed at the manger and asked the Lord if he'd give me a little red wagon. I'd take him for a ride. <laughs> you know, some of us need to take him on a journey with us and bless him. Like he's not been blessed. Can I get a witness this morning? That's a, he kept his word. He kept his promise. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. I want to bless him this morning. He's been too good to me. When I think about how I've been to him, I can't measure up, but thank God for his mercies this morning. Amen. He let me live this morning. He let me, amen. He let my wife get up this morning. He let my children get up this morning. He let my son, he let everything, he let everybody be safe this morning. Oh, that's, I can't describe that to you. 
I pray for those pastors. I'm closing. Come to music, please. I pray for those the pastor down in Texas and different ones. The the one in, in, in North Carolina or South Carolina, which one it was. When somebody came into the congregation or, and shot and killed 10, 12, 20, 30. I can't imagine how that pastor, that church deals. Amen. How, how he deals with it. Amen. To look there and realize what happened. I know that we're serving God. But I like, I like this scripture in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And all these died in faith. If you got to die, die in the faith. Because that's the way to do it by the grace of God. Can I get a witness in this house? This morning, I want you to just stop for just a moment and reflect. I know we're going to have Christmas dinners the next couple of days. understand something this morning if it had not been for the Lord if it had not been for the Lord is God good to you this morning is he good to you is he good to you do you know that he's your savior this morning do you know he's your savior unto this day born in the city of, of David a savior Christ the Lord how many glad you got a savior this morning He's more than a baby. He was more than Mary and Joseph's boy. He was the Savior, not of the Jews only, but of the whole world. world. Aren't you glad that God come by your way one day? Amen. Right now, would you just slip your hands towards heaven? If you're lost this morning, this altar's open. If you need a new commitment to God, a lot of times we have to recommit, humble our hearts and say, God, here am I this morning. Come on, talk to him. Reach out to him this morning and love him. Come on, just love him for a moment this morning. Let, let this word sink into your spirit that you're not just hearing Brother Wayne. You're not just hearing, you've got used to me, but hear something past just my lips that I'm preaching you to the eternal word of God, that God's mindful of you this morning. And God cares about you. God wants to bless you this morning. We're going into a brand, brand new year. I believe by the power of God, we're going to see some great things happen. Come on, reach out to him this morning. To hear your heart's cry. For he's passing by this moment. Your every need. Anybody need prayer? I need a touch of heaven this morning. So reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Come on. Come on, reach out and touch Him. Let Him touch your heart this morning. You may be saved, just need a touch of heaven this morning. Just need a touch of heaven. Into that place. That only God knows about this morning. Come on, reach out to him. Yes, he is. He will supply. So reach out and touch the Lord. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this tabernacle. Come on, I feel the Spirit of God in here right now. Come on, let him touch you. Come on, let him reach out and touch you this morning. Come on, reach out and touch him this morning. Come on, respond as he's passing by. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell this church, but he can't do it. Tell the pressure, he can't do it. Tell the lies of the devil, he can't do it this morning. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on and love him. So reach out and touch the Lord. One more time. Anybody need prayer before we change this service?
He's passing by this moment. Your every need He will supply. So reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. They play real, real softly. I'll ask you this morning to get your neighbor by the hand. Uh, supposed to be several visitors with us tonight. Most of them are going to be lost. Not all of them, but some of them are going to be lost. Would you like to see this altar lined across here? With lost people because God knocked on their heart. God's mindful of you. Let's pray right now that God would save them. God knows who they are. Ask God to get a hold of them. Come on, ask God to get a hold of them. Father, right now you see the people that's coming tonight that's lost. God, let the conviction power of God touch them through the, the plays and the dramas and the, the singing and the, God, the preaching and everything is said and done tonight. God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, God, we have prayed, but it takes you. God, would you save them tonight? Save them, save them now. Let them even right now, God, give their hearts surrender to you. Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, God, we're going to thank you for it. We're going to honor you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Would you give the Lord a shout of praise one more time? Come on, make it ring in the house. Make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Brother John, just say something for the Lord. It's good to have you, my friend. Amen. It's an honor to have you all this morning. Amen. Appreciate God's goodness. Everybody say 6.30 tonight. 6:30. Amen. Remember those that are out sick. Um, and uh, li listen, listen. I need, I need, amen. Amen. Solid rock.